Son, and our lives. And we magnify his holy name. We thank all of you for joining us for your live stream. Those of you that are here in the sanctuary of Church of Redeemer, we give God praise on today. Amen. Before we enter our time of worship praise, the word of God is before us. Psalms 149. Hear ye the word of the Lord as you stand in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Praise them. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with the timbrel and horn. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in his honor and let them sing joy on their beds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, we praise you, we worship you, we glorify your holy name. We thank you for this day that you've made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. How we praise you and how we worship you and how we glorify your holy name. Thank you for being our everything for today. We magnify you and we praise you for salvation. We thank you for joy and peace that passes all understanding. Father, we worship you and we glorify you on this day that you have made. And we thank you, Lord God, to be able to praise you and to worship you. We ask that you will be with every song, Father. Be with the reading of the word and be with your preached word. Move by your spirit and even as we join together at your table, Lord. Bless us and be with us. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you on the day the praise and summer is coming to lead us in praise and worship.
We thank God for all of the many blessings that God has given to us because of his grace, his love, and kindness. The word of God is before us on today, found in Mark, the 11th chapter. We want to look at verses 24, 25, and 26. If you would turn with me, amen, in your smart devices, in your Bibles, Mark 11, 24, and 26, as we hear the word of the Lord, as we continue on the series of messages, it's still worse, Mark 11, 24 through 26. If you're prepared, say amen. amen. If you're able to stand, we ask you to stand for the reading of God's word as you're able. And it reads thus, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your heavenly Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for reading, for the hearing and the reading of God's word. Let's pray together. Lord, we are thankful that you have blessed us to be here in your presence, and we thank you for the times of worship and praise. Thank you for your love for us. For we're reminded in your word, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you for your love for us. Be with us now as we open your word and as we listen to what you have to say through your word. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. 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 Once again, we're thankful for all of you that have joined us in the sanctuary as well as via live stream. We give God praise for all of his many blessings. We want to use as a guiding thought on today, it goes together. It goes together. There is an interesting concept that many enjoyable and productive things come in pairs. Better yet, things that go together, sometimes they come in pairs. As you know, there is salt and then there is pepper. There is coffee and then there is cream. There is bread and butter fish and chips, bacon and eggs, thank God for bacon and eggs, amen. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese, peanut butter and jelly, but not only food, but there's up and there's down, there's pros and there's cons, there's shoes and socks, there is the tricks and then there is the treats, there is soap and water, hallelujah, and then there is hide and seek, there's toilet and and twilly down. There is pencil and paper, nuts and bolts, lock and key. There are pairs in our lives. Even as we look into the Bible, there are still pairs. There's Adam and Eve, Noah and the ark, Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau. There is good and evil, sadness and gladness, right and wrong. And today from our church, text, there is faith and forgiving. Amen. Jesus instructs us today to believe in God and to have faith in God. But he also says while you are praying, believing in God, remember to forgive others. Amen. You remember Jesus had just cursed the fig tree because it was barren. It didn't have any fruit. And the following day, the scripture said, uh, the disciples remembered that tree as they passed by, and the tree, the fig tree, was withered from its roots. And the disciples were really amazed. Man, this Jesus has so much power. 
And he said to his disciples, have faith in God. You can speak to the mountain and tell the mountain, remove itself and drop itself in the sea. And Jesus is here to encourage us today to speak to the mountains in our lives. Amen. Speak to the problems. Speak to the difficulties. Speak to the sicknesses and say to them, go to the sea. And Jesus said, if we believe in our heart and shall not doubt, we shall have those things that we ask for. Amen. So we want to talk today about prayer and forgiveness and how they work together. You're reminded in your Bible reading that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That faith is belief. Faith is confidence. Faith is trust. Faith is reliance. Faith is dependence. Faith is expectation. The Greek word is pistos. It conveys the idea of believing in something despite what is going on around you. Faith is the way in which God tells us that we receive the blessings of God and we see the power of God made visible in our lives. If you can believe, once again, all things are possible to those that believe. So faith allows us to see the power of God in our lives. Faith moves mountains. Faith heals the sick. If there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint in faith and the prayer of, of faith shall save or heal the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. Faith is the means in which we have the entrance to the kingdom of God. By grace, through faith, are you saved, says Ephesians 2, and not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not a work, lest any man should boast. And that faith blesses us time and, and time and time again. Faith is necessary even in our relationship with God. You remember Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We must have faith in our God in order for God to bless us the way he wants to bless us. So, as we look at the theme and at the truth of faith, some would say, well, Pastor, aren't many people blessed and they don't believe in a God? Yes, all people receive the blessings of God due to God's universal love. Amen. But to get some blessings, <laughs> you have to have faith, hallelujah. Many blessings that God had for our life, we must believe God for the blessings. Asking for a particular blessing requires faith. Lord, I need you to heal me from coronavirus. That requires faith. Lord, I pray that justice prevail in America. That requires faith. Lord, I need some money for my bills. That requires faith in God. Hallelujah. Faith is required. Those of us who have faith, we must also be operating in forgiveness. Faith and forgiveness work together. And thank God for the men of God and the women of God that have taught us about faith and we need to have faith and we sing songs about faith. I remember that song, uh, Dr. Smith, just a little more faith. That's all I need. But we need to make sure that we understand the connection between faith and forgiveness. For the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. 
And yes, it's great for you to have faith, and I want you to have faith, and I'm encouraging you at this very moment to have faith, but also you have to have the work of forgiveness. For Jesus said, as you stand believing in God, if you remember somebody have wronged you, forgive them. Release them of the responsibilities of the wrong that they have done. Release them, forgive them. Act of forgiveness, men broken relationship. The act of forgiveness, restore a right relationship with God. And the act of forgiveness even helps you to stay away. I'm so glad that God knows what he's done. <laughs> Hallelujah. What are you saying, Pastor? Because in my study of this this week, I was reminded and also learned some more interesting facts about the act of forgiveness. Once again, it lowers your risk of having a heart attack when you forgive. It improves your cholesterol level and your sleep when you forgive. It reduces pain in your body and your blood pressure and it lowers levels of anxiety and it brings down the tendency of depression and stress. God knows what we're doing, what he's doing rather, and God knows what we need and we need forgiveness. Faith and forgiveness works together. Dr. Karen Schwartz, a, psycho, a psychologist, says forgiveness is choosing to offer compassion and empathy to the person who has done wrong to you. Let me say it again. You didn't get it the first time. Amen. Forgiveness is choosing to offer compassion and empathy to the person who has wronged you. And in her discussion of the importance of forgiveness, she said that when we forgive, we need to reflect and remember Amen. what occurred when we were hurt or when we were wrong. And then we need to empathize with the person. Pastor, I don't want to empathize when they hurt me. But you need to see that person in the context in which they are operating and everything that happened, empathize with the person. Maybe they didn't see you when they hit your car. Maybe they weren't intending, uh, intending to cuss you out. Empathize with them. Yeah, yeah Pastor, they were intending to cuss me out. Amen. But empathize with the person, what they're going through, the stresses that they're going, empathize with the person. Yeah. Try to understand the other person. That's what I'm talking about. And then the third step, she says, she says to forgive deeply. Make sure that you're forgiving for the right reason. Not because somebody told you to forgive them. <laughs> Not because uh -huh, you have some advantages uh, or you have some or uh, some other arterial motive for forgiving them, but forgive them deeply and personally and forgive them and set them free. Number four, she says, let go of expectations for their behavior. Five, decide to forgive. And number six, she says, forgive yourself. Hallelujah. Forgive them, but also forgive yourself. And so Jesus says, when you stand praying and you're believing and trusting me, make sure you forgive the person who has hurt your feelings. And we need that in our society, in our nation, in our world today. It's forgiveness. Now, some acts have consequences. Many acts have consequences. But you still can forgive a person. Hallelujah. Yes, you ran into 
to my car. Yes, you wrecked my car. Uh huh. But your insurance is going to have to fix my car. Hallelujah. I forgive you. Hallelujah. <laughs> what are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to show you practical application of what forgiveness means. Forgiveness means releasing the person of the wrong. But many times there are consequences of the wrong. Jesus says, I want you to believe me, but I also want you to forgive the person who have hurt you, the person who have disappointed you, the person who have caused sadness in your life. Don't allow that to stop your faith. Do you not know that unforgiveness can stop your faith? Paul writes to the Christian couple and he said, you know, make sure you get uh, you get a resolution to your, uh, your disagreement because if you have disagreements and, and hurt and unforgiveness in your heart, it can hinder your prayer life. And so God wants us to know that we can just expect God to do something for us, but if we got unforgiveness in our heart, it can block our prayers. And I don't know about you, I don't want any blockage to my prayers, amen. I, I need a direct connection with God, hallelujah. And if I am re uh, remembered, if I remember rather, that someone has hurt me, then I am to forgive them. Another time Jesus talked about Forgiveness, he said, if you bring your gift to the altar <laughs> and you remember uh -huh, that someone has harmed you or hurt you, go and be reconciled with your brother. Then come and bring the gift to the Lord. And that our relationship with one another is very important to God. And God says faith and forgiveness. Oh, I hear somebody saying, well, Pastor, I hear you talking about forgiveness, and I know it's right to forgive. But what about those public sins? As well as those private sins? Well, God wants us to forgive as well. And that's what needs to happen in America. We need to have a time of forgiveness. Even when people don't ask us to forgive, God requires us to forgive, and I know there's a lot of discussion about uh, African Americans forgiving the larger society when there's hurt and when there's racism and injustice. Yes, we are to forgive by command, but we also know that there are consequences yeah. to actions. Yeah. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that our faith and our willingness to forgive might be that mountain that Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. and when he said, say to the mountain, move out of my way and go to the sea, Jesus might be telling all of us to deal with the mountain of unforgiveness in our lives and tell that mountain to move out of our way. We have too much to do. We have too much love to show. And we can't allow unforgiveness to dwell in our heart. So we got to tell that mountain of forgive, unforgiveness to get out of our way. Because God has something, something special for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word that comes to challenge, comes to enlighten us, to show us the connection between faith and forgiveness. Lord, if we want to operate in faith, and we know because the word has spoken to our hearts this morning, that we have to also operate in forgiveness. And so, Father, we ask that you would search our hearts and search 
our minds and our spirits on today and show us how to believe you more, how to trust you more, and how to depend upon you more. In our personal lives, Lord, help us to trust you and depend you, depend, depend on you more. And then, Lord God, in our personal lives, help us, Lord God, to forgive family members, friends, Lord God, neighbors, Father. Help us to be able to extend the gift of forgiveness. And Lord, even in our public life, as we see another black man, another black woman being killed by the hands of unjust police, we pray, Lord God, that we have the spirit of forgiveness. And Lord, we also understand that justice need to be carried out even in those situations, but Father God, help us not to carry that grievance in our heart. Yeah. But be able to love, Lord God, in the face of injustice, Lord God. Be able to walk in love. We know that wrong is happening. We pray, oh God, for special, a special amount of forgiveness. During this time, Lord. We ask for a special amount of faith, Lord God. We know your word says that we had the faith of the size of a grain of a mustard seed, Lord. We can say, move and this shall be done. We pray, Lord God, that we can believe you during this time. COVID is affecting all of our lives. Family members have COVID, Lord. Friends and acquaintances, Lord, has COVID. Father, help us to trust you and believe that you're the healer of all of our diseases. We thank you for reminding us that faith and forgiveness goes together. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God said amen. 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 And amen. Will you put your hands together and give God some praise? We're thankful for the presence of the Lord and we thank God for moving in our midst through his word. This time, amen, we want to give as the Lord has blessed us and prospered us to give. Amen. We want to honor the Lord in our tithes and in our givings on today, tithes and offerings. We want to bless the Lord. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give unto you, Lord God, as you have been so good to us. You met our every need, Lord God. You watched over us. You provided for us. We have a home, Lord God. We have transportation. We have food on our table, Lord God. And we thank you for it. We know this is the Lord's joy and it's marvelous in our eyes. And so, God, we ask that you would just speak to our hearts, direct us in our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. 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 And amen. As you give, amen, we want you to know the announcements. Amen. We want to honor everyone that was born in the month of September. Hallelujah. Amen. If you were born in the month of September, we want to say happy birthday to you. Amen. And wish you a great month and a great day. Let's sing together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
racial justice is going to be led by Reverend Carson Roden, amen, the president of MVPC Essie, as well, amen, pastor of Westminster Presbyterian Church. And the Zoom link is here in the announcements, and you can contact the office if you need further details. Also, we want you to know that on the 12th, there's going to be a special uh, training on the behalf of MVPC Essie, amen, of nominating committees via Zoom, and that information can also be received, amen, through a call to the church office. We want you to know also on the 19th that we'll have a special congregation meeting at 4 p.m. outside in the courtyard, amen, and we're going to be abiding by the COVID guidelines with masks, amen, safe distancing, amen, and making sure we're keeping each other uh, safe and sound. We're going to, amen, be working and looking at a topic of discussion that pertains, amen, to our church, amen, and we're going to ask God's blessing upon that. We want to ask you that you would inform yourself in all of the announcements and be so directed. Also, we want you to know that there are three ways in which you can give unto the church. Amen. You can mail it to the church address, 900 East Rose Grands Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90059. Also, you can call the church office and, amen, arrange with, amen, our administrative assistant, amen, what time you can come by and drop off your gift, or you can do it via app, amen, I think it is push pay, hallelujah, and find, amen, Church of the Redeemer under the title of the name of the church, download it, and you can also pay your tithes and offering that way. So we thank God for the opportunity to continue in ministry. We want to remember the prayer list, amen, there's many names on the prayer list, and on next Sunday, we'll read all the names off for you so you can be reminded to pray one for another. Amen. We are thankful for the blessings of the Lord and we thank God for this time of celebration. This is, amen, Communion Sunday and we are thankful for the opportunity to be reminded of the blessing and the love of the Lord. We prepare now, amen, to participate in the Holy Eucharist, amen, the great thanksgiving by reading the word of God found in 1 Corinthians. The 11th chapter, verses 23, amen, through 26. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this when you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we praise you. And we magnify you. And we thank you for your love. Lord, when we consider all the things you've done, we can't help but to say thank you. So thank you for the birth, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Lord, we come reminded that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That your word teaches us, Lord, and we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just of cleansing us from our sins and making us whole and making us sin. And so, God, as we prepare to receive your body and your blood, we pray that your Holy Spirit, through the agency of your blood, will cleanse us and wash us and make us new. We thank you, Lord, that even as your word says to forgive, we ask you to forgive us. 
We thank you and we praise you and we magnify your holy name for forgiveness, for sanctification, for holiness and righteousness. And we receive it by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. 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 Every communion Sunday, we join together to profess our belief in God through the Apostles' Creed. We ask at this time that you would find it in your bulletin. You would stand with us as we confess what we believe about our faith. If you're prepared, say amen. Let us say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 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 Let's pray together. Father, be our yes as we come to your table of love. Renew our spirit, renew our faith, and help us to realize how sweet it is to be loved by you. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Word. 
church of Jesus. This is my body given unto you. As often as you eat, eat it in remembrance of me. Let's eat together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 